Like this is this is a much more like okay, you are getting the the Ryzen 9, this is cardboard, you know, this is not this is much more reasonable to be like high end product than this. This is just a little too over the top. But if I'm gonna put it on my shelf, I'm gonna choose that one. <sighs> Someday somebody's gonna put like the Raspberry Pi 6 in here and it's gonna outperform the i9 9900K or maybe the Raspberry Pi 17 <laughs> or something. And it's gonna be like a little what? screen going on one of the sides. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's a dual, it's like a, like a holographic HDMI or something, I don't know. So there's some new processors out and some new graphics cards. There's more content than either one of us could possibly cover. Yeah. And also there's so many weird things that I needed some help doing a sanity check. So that's why I'm on an unusual channel. And now I feel like I've lost my sanity. Everything I know and believed about technology has just been thrown out <laughs> by the window and painted red. Third, th third time's the charm is Windows 3.1 <laughs> before Windows, or Windows 3 before things took over. Third generation Horizon before AMD took over. Yeah, yeah. And taking over, they probably will. <laughs> We've been doing a lot of testing on the uh, multimedia workflow side yeah. of things. Much more, so I did a review. You can find that on, on level one, and there's like a full write up because, again, like YouTube's weird. These kind of things, like, there's gonna be 17 videos, and it doesn't make sense for me to release 17 videos, but we don't really make any money on YouTube anyway. So I'm probably gonna release all the videos, but our Patreon has like a link to all of the stuff, and there's also an article with a write up. I don't usually do write ups, but I felt like there was so much stuff here, I had to write it all down to organize my thoughts. Yeah. And I, I did more work on the processor side than the graphics card side. Because the graphics card side, there was some weird stuff. And I feel like you have a lot more experience with like the encoder side of things mm -hmm. and like the gaming side of things. And I was like, hey, I need some help double checking this because there's some things here that don't make sense. Well, Navi uh, addresses that. Just addressed it, not necessarily in a specific direction, but. <laughs> but uh, there's, there's, a, there's so much, there's so much stuff. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. We did some stuff. Yeah. As he mentioned, there's a bajillion videos that could be made and are already going live on YouTube right now about the subject. So I really wanted to focus on what most people don't focus a ton on, which was content creation, broadcasting, streaming, things like that, that I can kind of hone in on. And there is a lot of limitations to what all I can cover in the short amount of time, and I will hopefully be taking some of these home at some point to cover more in depth. But oh man, if, you, if you're looking to build not even just a budget content creation rig anymore, but get you a beefy x570 motherboard like for legit content creation that doesn't need hdd these things are amazing what <laughs> what I, like the a, the plucky little am4 socket that's gone from four cores to now 12 cores and 16 cores in september it's like the 16 core i mean the 12 core really doesn't leave a lot to be desired yeah i the 16 core will just make me sad that it's not releasing as threadripper to be honest like i am at this point I, I've had a weird relationship in terms of my approach to Ryzen ch chips in the past as I knew like they were capable but they weren't you know th there, there was just little bits of I want a little bit more out of it and then I sat down and we'll cover the tests that I ran but I, I, I ran these through the tests and then I ran them again we're here a second day running my numbers again because I didn't believe the numbers I got the first time because they're beating everything that I own or can test. Now this CPU is a Even 65 I, it, watt TDP, but I might have overclocked it just a hair. Yeah, I some of my tests aren't the most like like for like scientific tests because everything both on Intel and AMD side is just kind of overclocked as much as <laughs> we could squeeze out of it. But that's even more telling because even putting it up against my actually mine and his 9900Ks, I put them simul like individually just to double check and make sure that they're correct. Overclocked to five gigahertz and mine with like 4200 megahertz RAM. The 12 cores, that's not the 12 core. The 12 core is still winning by a long shot. So I tested, I did the usual like Cinebench and CPU-Z benchmarks and things like that. But then I dived into, I wanted to test timeline performance and render performance in DaVinci Resolve, which beats Premiere by a long shot. And now I have a whole separate video to talk about Resolve versus Premiere again, because, oh my God, the data is even more convincing than I thought my anecdotal evidence was. Premiere renders and then actual FFmpeg transcodes, because that is a workflow that I'm using a lot more lately without GUIs, stuff I said I'd never want to touch and now is part of my daily workflow. And so that's more of like a direct hands-on encoding situation. Come to the CLI, we yeah. have cookies. Yeah, <laughs> In Resolve workflows, the 12 core was beat, actually in Resolve, the 12 core and the eight core? 3700X, yeah. 3700X and 3900X were beating pretty much everything else I tested in H.264 renders 
and DNX HR renders. And some of the other codecs which Resolve isn't as fast with, there were some other results, but the 3900X even beat the 2990WX. Actually, it beat it in everything except for DNX HR, which is apparently a very thread optimized codec because uh, the, uh, I don't know if you've seen Windows coverage of the 2990WX and how the multiple NUMA nodes makes it not scale super well in Windows. It worked in Linux. I flipped it over to Linux, ran Resolve again, <laughs> DNX HR just like ran away on the 2990. But that's the only situation where the 2990 beat anything. Here's, your, here's to you, Resolve team, for doing a good job on Linux. You're going to sell a lot of stuff because uh, I think that it's, it is it is pretty clear that the Resolve team is doing a better job more coherently mm -hmm. with the rendering technology than Adobe. Yeah, and Adobe should really be ashamed, but also the Resolve team is really good. Yeah, I, they're, they're doing magic. And they just released another update this weekend that fixed some of our issues with Navi, which we'll cover in a little bit, but not all of them. Yeah, we found some bugs. <laughs> and it's like, we're on, we're on it. <laughs> which was awesome because yeah. they're on top of things. And that also means that the DaVinci Resolve people are working with AMD. So this is... And I will say from my experience working with the other side, instead of, hey, I found a bug, we're on it. It's, hey, I found a bug. Six months later, silent driver update fixes it. <laughs> Which is fun. So Again, in, here's to you, Resolve team. Good job. <laughs> so in Resolve and Premiere, these pretty much beat out everything. I, I threw in, since Intel hasn't left Skylake, why shouldn't I? So I threw in my 6900K. Ooh, sick burn. My 9900K, my 7980XE. There are some situations where my 7980XE, which is heavily overclocked and literally melting itself right now, can beat out these chips. But for the most part, like the performance is up above it and competing even with the 2950X. The margins which, on the, that was so close that I think the 16 core is probably going to edge out the 7980. And for me, that well, means that I think that the uh, the whole X299 platform is probably going to be devoured whole by yep. the next gen Threadripper. Like there's just... It is for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and our, our rigs, which again, I mentioned these aren't the most scientific tests because our rigs for AMD were only had 16 to 64 gigs depending on the situation, whereas mine is loaded with 128 gigs of RAM. Um, and so there's a <laughs> lot of optimizations that are on my daily driver that aren't on these test rigs and these test rigs were still kind of wiping the floor with it. Premiere renders the same thing. Once you get into FFmpeg, the not even the Threadripper 2 chips, the 2950 or the 2990, nor my i9-7980 can compete with FFmpeg, other than once you bring in, for whatever reason, the DXVA2 hardware accelerated decoding of the footage makes my 7980 XE beat it. So somehow about like having it decoded faster means it can process it faster and keep up. Maybe that's a thread management issue with FFmpeg or X264. That is the only situation where my 7980 XE actually beats these for FFmpeg encodes, which is... <laughs> Lol. I am literally, I'm sitting here. So I've, I've been sitting here for the past three months. I haven't even released the latest video that we shot all this stuff for like two months ago, trying to cool and delid and lap my i9, trying to keep it cool. And then I come over here and start reviewing these and it's just beating it in performance. And I'm trying to figure out how to squeeze my PCIe usage to fit on these. <laughs> and then I'm just like, why can't they just give me Threadripper now? Because I think there's, from what I can tell, and we're still waiting on the final data for it, but I think there's two sets of optimizations on this new platform that are really kind of making the difference here. One being the higher cache amount on the processors, which is apparently- two megs of game yeah. cache, which is also good for content creators. Yeah, which seems to be helping quite a bit. And then oddly enough, which we will cover more in Navi, but my render tests, I did some testing renders with the 5700 and the 5700 XT versus a 2080 Ti. That is still performing just fine beating it more. Wait, and, wait, wait. The clickbait there is Navi is faster than a 2080 yeah. Ti? Yeah. And so what <laughs> seems to be happening, and I can only get so much, you know, actual data about how this is happening from the resources available in Windows or that I know how to access, is the actual PCIe 4 bandwidth. And this is something that AMD was actually bragging about specifically with ProRes 444. They were saying you can decode this at a much faster speed. So you're gonna be able to play back, you know, whatever 8K 60 frames per second stuff nobody uses. Um, but specifically with those higher bitrate codecs, which for me is Cineform and DNxHR, having that PCIe 4.0 bandwidth means that you can actually see the copy speed in Task Manager for a graphics card, which is actually how much it's transferring textures between the graphics card and the processor and things like that, is significantly like being utilized and going significantly faster than on the NVIDIA cards. And so even with these cheaper $400, $500 graphics cards versus my like 800 ones, it's beating it. 
And so these two combine together to make an insane system. And then when you factor in the fact that you can get faster NVMe on it as well, <laughs> and that is where I like to see my optimizations in video editors as NVMe cache drives just make a world of difference. Get even faster and lower latency cache drives and... Yay, write speed. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the NVMe write speed of the new Aorus Insane SSD over four gigabytes per second. You can't do that on PCI Express 3, but imagine imagine a world with RAID 0 of those, which you can do on the AM4 platform because there's all that PCI Express 4 bandwidth. Yeah, yeah. And so I went into this expecting, okay, these perform pretty well. Might even beat my 9900K for like specific streaming stuff or do decently well. I wasn't expecting to question my entire workflow on its own. And now I'm just sitting here crying that it's going to take until probably fall to see any hints of Threadripper. <laughs> and I get that Rome wasn't built in a day and neither is Threadripper. Ha ha. But, but uh, I think AMD should release it like tomorrow so I can just give them my money. Like I will give, give, give. Also, the big, big surprise with this release is that one thread performance. Yeah. Single thread was surprising. And yeah. in most case, actually, single thread was beating my 9900K in most cases other than when I like. I could give the 9900K an edge by running like the benchmarks in real time and like <laughs> process priority, but that was pretty much it. Yeah, the 90, well, so in, in like CPU Z, CPU Z right. is like, it's not the best benchmarking program, but if you load the preset for the 9900K, it's like 900 and, or 580 single thread. And that's like no mitigations or security updates and probably like five gigahertz overclock. But right. my 9900K running at 5.1 gigahertz all core, which is perfectly fine and stable. You know, it's nowhere near 580 on that. And yeah. these CPU, even in, even in artificial benchmarks, these CPUs really go toe to toe with the 9900K. But real world, even single thread, these CPUs are outperforming the 9900K. And you know, X299 has always been at a dis disadvantage on the single thread. Yeah. You know, you talk about your CPU being on fire, your 7980 where it's delitted literally is on fire. It is as overclocked as it possibly can be, and it's one thread is still not as good as a 9900K. Yep. Moral of the story, I have lots of benchmarks and graphs I can show you and on the website and the description they've probably been on screen. If you if you're editing videos or streaming, You'll want these. I will have a whole separate video covering my streaming benchmarks on their own, and I actually have developed what I hope to be a new standard for streaming benchmarks to beat out the typical methodology that people are using right now that I really disagree with, that I really think is revealing about how these perform compared to my 9900K, which suddenly doesn't look like it can stream at all, and suddenly AMD's benchmark is just <laughs> like, oh yeah. Yeah, to be clear, there are some rough edges around this launch. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are new products. There are bugs that are going to have to be fixed. We tripped over a number of bugs in doing the testing, and we'll show you that. And the bugs we especially tripped over, you know, the rough edges are sometimes also dented edges. And we'll be covering <laughs> that in its own video, too. Uh.